Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, we're going to be making this colorful pattern using recursion. I found recursion to be a bit confusing when I first learned about it, so I hope that this tutorial will help you better understand the concept while making this simple but interesting pattern. Recursion is the process of defining a problem in terms of itself. To write a recursive function, first we need to define an initial set of instructions. And for our pattern, that initial set of instruction is to divide a rectangle in half. And then we're going to keep dividing the smaller already divided rectangles into half again. But we're going to do it by calling that same function within itself, but providing different sets of arguments. You might notice that this feels like a loop, an infinite loop to be exact, because we're calling the same function inside itself over and over and over again, and you are exactly right. So the three main properties of a recursive function is that one, it needs to perform a recursive operation, but two, it needs to have a base condition at which a recursive function will stop, and then lastly, it needs to work towards that base condition so we ensure that it will stop at some point. Why don't we start simple by just drawing a rectangle? So so I'm going to define four variables, x, y, w, and h. And then inside setup, we're going to give it the initial condition. So let's do x and y to be equals to 0. And then let's set w to be equals to width, which I have set at 600. And then h to be equals to height at 400. And then inside draw, we're going to draw a rectangle using the rect function, which takes in a total of four arguments. The first two are the x and y coordinates of the top left corner of the rectangle, and then the third and the fourth are the width and the height. So we can just put in the four variables that we just defined. Let's click run. All right, so now we have this rectangle here. Now we want to divide this rectangle into half, right? And we can do that quite easily. So we're going to use the rex function again. We need to provide different arguments. So it's going to be x and y, and then the width will be width divided by 2, and then height, right? So let's comment out the first rectangle and then click Run. So now we have the left rectangle, the first half. For the second half on the right, basically, the x coordinate has to be moved by width divided by 2. So it's going to be x plus width divided by 2, so w divided by 2, y will still be the same, and then for the width and the height, it will be the same as the first rectangle here, so width divided by 2, and then height. Let's click run. Now, how about we put this inside a function? I'm going to declare this function and call it divide, and divide will have four parameters, x, y, w, and h, and I'm just going to copy and paste this inside here. Then inside the draw function, I'm going to call divide and then provide these four arguments, right? And we get the same thing. We want to keep dividing these rectangles into halves. So what we can do is that we can basically just call the divide function two more times, but provide the arguments as the x and y coordinate and the width and the height of the smaller rectangles. So it will be this, and then it will be this. Then let's click Run. All right, so now we have four smaller rectangles. And if we want to divide it even more, we can continue to keep calling these divide functions over and over and over again. But we don't want to do it that way, right? We want to do it using recursion. So basically, what we're going to do is that now we have these two rect functions as the initial instructions. Then Basically, we want to call divide and then provide a new set of arguments. So how about we start with the left rectangle? I'm going to delete this one. Then I'm going to copy this set of instruction. And then if we click Run Now, the danger of this is that basically we're going to enter into an infinite loop. But I just want to show you what's going to happen. So let's just try it out. All right, so it didn't actually crash my program, but it does give the error that says maximum call stack size exceeded. And that is because we enter into an infinite loop because we don't have the base condition that tells it when to stop. So that's exactly what we're going to do next. Inside this divide function here, I'm going to provide another parameter and let's call it count and let's provide that as zero. So basically, if count is less than 1, then we're going to call 
the divide function again. And if it's not, then we're not going to call this divide function again. So inside here, when this divide function gets called, we need to do something such that it will get out of this loop, right? So I'm going to do count plus one. When it enters this divide function, it's going to call the two rect functions. Then if count is less than one, it enters this if statement, then call the divide function again, then goes through the two rect functions, and then count becomes one, then it will not enter this if statement again. And so if I click run, and then you can just increase this to the number that you want, your left rectangles will keep getting divided into half. So we can do the same thing to the right rectangle, right? So we just need to provide the set of arguments here. And now we have several divided rectangles. And this is the basic concept of recursion. We have the three properties. We're calling the recursive function, right? So we have the function that is called inside itself. And then we also have the base condition, which is when count equals to five. And that is when we exit out of this recursive function. And then we also have a way at which we can achieve that base condition. But if you notice here, all of these are the x and y coordinate and the width and the height of a rectangle. So I want to actually put this inside a class so that it stores this information so we can play around with this design a little bit more. So let's come to this arrow here, click the plus sign, click create file. I'm going to call this file tile.js, add file. And then before we write the class, let's go to index.html file and then come to this line of code, copy and paste, and then change the name here to the name that you just created your file. In my case, it's tile.js. And this is how you integrate a JavaScript file into your program. And now we are ready to write the class. So let's go to tile.js. Start by writing the word class, and then I'm going to call it tile. Then inside the constructor function, we're going to store four variables, right? So x, y, w, and h. And then set this as this.x equals to x, this.y equals to y this.w equals to w and this.h equals to h. And then I also want to write a method called, how about display? And basically we're going to draw the rectangle inside the display method here. So rect, then it's going to be this.x, this.y, this.w and these.h. All right, let's go back to sketch.js. Now, instead of drawing out the rectangles right away, what we're going to do is that first, we're basically just going to create two new objects when we call the divide function. So let's start by declaring an array called tiles, and then we're going to push a new object, and we can use the function push to create a new value inside this array here. And we're going to push what? We're going to push a new tile object at these locations, right? So. And then the second one is going to be the same new tile of, and then it's going to be this set of arguments. All right. Now we can delete that. And how about we just print tiles. And as you can see here, there are a bunch of tile array being printed out. And that is because we put the divide function inside draw. So it's being called over and over again. So I'm going to actually also call a no loop, which is the function that will stop it from looping. So the draw function is only being called once. So let's click, actually, I'm going to start count also at less than zero. Let's click run. All right, so now we have one tile array. And inside here, we have two tile objects. And as you can see here, these are the coordinates and the width and the height of the left and the right rectangles, right? And actually also, we want to write else here. And so we can do tiles of zero dot display and tiles of one dot display, right? And then now we have two rectangles drawn here. So we actually want to tweak this conditional statement quite a bit. So first, we don't need to call the divide function two times anymore, right? And we don't need to write the tiles display method this way as well. What we want to do is that we want to write a for loop that goes through 
the length of the tile so we can do it by writing tiles.length and I plus plus here then we're going to put in this conditional statement inside the for loop and then divide we only need one and what are we going to provide in here we're going to provide the x and y coordinates right of the tiles and the width and the height all right so now we're calling the divide function on all of the objects which there are only two inside the tiles array then for the display method we basically just need to call i here just once then if i click run we get the same thing now if i were to change this to one to two or to five and now we get a recursive pattern. Instead of dividing it by half, how about we set a ratio at which it can be divided? How about I set a variable called split and split is going to be how about one third of the way. And now instead of doing width divided by two, we're going to do width times split, right? And then here is x plus w times split. And then for the width for the second one here, it has to be W minus W times split. Let's click run. Okay, and then now you can change this split ratio to whatever you want. So if we do 0 0.5, we get the same as we had. Now, what if we also want to cut it horizontally? What we can do is how about we set another variable, let's call it direction. And let's set direction to zero. And we provide that as a new argument, also in here. And then I'm going to set a conditional statement that says, if direction is equal to zero, then perform the set of instructions. So cut it vertically, else then I want to cut it horizontally. So basically we're doing the same thing, but we switch it to the Y side. So it's going to be X comma Y and then width comma height times split. And then here it's going to be X comma Y plus H times split. And then same thing here, it's going to be H minus H times split. And then we need to also provide this extra argument here for direction. If I click run now, you can see that it's still just vertically cut. And that is because we set direction to zero and we never changed it. So inside this if statement, if direction is zero, then how about we just switch it back and forth. So let's set direction to one or else then we set it back to zero. So it's going to rotate back and forth between cutting it vertically and cutting it horizontally. So let's click run. All right, and then we can change the split here. All right. Now what if we want to randomize the split every time we call the divide function? So we can also use a random function. And how about we provide a value between 0 0.2 and 0 0.8? click run all right and last but not least let's go back to tile.js and how about we set the stroke weight to let's do three and then let's set the stroke color to how about black and then i also want to define a colors array to be this and i want to fill it randomly so i can just use the random function and i can just put in colors as the argument which I recently learned from your comments so thank you so much and let's click run perfect so I hope that you get a better understanding of what recursion is and how to use it to create interesting patterns and here are some of the other patterns I have experimenting with using the same basic code I plan to create more tutorials using recursion so if you have a suggestion please leave them in the comments give this one a try